All right, welcome to Black Book Basics. I'm Opus, this is Coach T. And then today we're gonna to be talking to you about no contact psychology. So today's video is all about going inside the psychology of someone who got broken up with, and we're gonna be going inside the mind of someone who actually decided to end things. So by the end of this video, you'll see exactly what the person is thinking on both ends, and you'll see why exactly going no contact works on just about everyone and is the best option for you to take. When you go no contact and you walk out the picture, both parties, whether you're the, the, the dumper or the dumpy, you're gonna be wondering what the other person is doing. Because keep in mind, you spent so much time together, you know? Even if even if you were together like for six months, you're still gonna be thinking about that person. I mean, to have anybody just disappear out of your life, even if you had a, a pet turtle that you had for like two weeks and it ran away from home, you're gonna be thinking about that pet turtle. How the hell a turtle gonna run away from home? What the hell that's bad. It would take a long time for that turtle to get down the street. <laughs> like the two months it's still on the sidewalk out uh, outside the front of the house. <laughs> Roger, he he's moving on, eh? Hey? <laughs> Don't leave me. Come back. Give me one more chance. <laughs> you're both gonna be thinking about each other, what you guys are doing, you know, what's going on. You gotta keep in mind, if you're the one that got dumped, the person that dumped you is gonna be thinking about you almost as much as you're thinking about them, as long as you don't do anything crazy to the point of no return. We say this all the time in videos, when women are done with you, they are done with you. When you push them to the point of like, not thinking about you, or not caring about you, I mean, when it, when it gets to that point, it's because you did something really bad. You did something crazy to completely like, mess yourself up. That's when it gets to the point of like, vandalizing and stuff. And, kicking dents in her car and stuff like that and going crazy. And that's when you're at the point where she'll, she'll just like quit thinking about you. And if she does, it's like in a negative way to a point where, you know, every time she walks out to her car and she's at the dent, she's gonna be like even more mad at you, okay? So the reason why I said that is you guys, quit being stupid during no contact, quit or during the breakup. <laughs> Don't start doing the crazy stuff and yelling at right. and like grappling with them and getting yourself in trouble, putting in jail and like restraining orders against you, man. That's just like, it's not worth it. It's, really stupid, all right? But as long as you like play the game right, you break up and it's a cool, clean breakup, nothing fazes you, you're on your like GQ, you know what I'm saying? All right, cool, all right, peace out. You leave You leave just like she asked you to do. Things will go a hell of a lot smoother for you, okay? She's gonna be thinking about you more, about how you walked out the picture like so smoothly, how you're not like a, you know, you didn't cry and you're like, you're more masculine and you come off more manly than any other guy during a breakup has. Cause all the other guys will start crying and like, man, we have so many guys that are like in the service, you know, military, army, Marines, whatever. Yeah, Navy SEALs. And these are like, these are like the most sickest, hardcore, like mm -hmm. men, alphas, you know what I'm saying? Theoretical. But it's like, you know, we talk to them in our coaching and, and, and you'll be amazed how many of these guys become like, like really soft when it comes to a, a, a scandalous ass little hoochie that don't care about them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when they get in their emotions and all soft and sad and, scared yeah. and crying and emotional. Not to let just talk about people in the service, because like, I have people, that, we, a bunch of men do it. I mean, even if you're like a doctor, we talk to lawyers or whatever, man. But like, it's, just, it's just like, those guys in the service trip me out when we get those type of calls. These do, these men know how to strike you in the throat with their index finger at a certain degree and know how to make you choke on your own blood. I mean, they know how to do things like that. And then they, they're boohooing over a chick who doesn't even want them They anymore. completely brushed them off and like ruined their life. Respect to the guys in the service, but like men should be men. Like men, yeah. it's like there's, regardless of like the, the situation you're in, how to break up when, like you should always be a man. Like men, we're big boys. I was told this when I was a kid, you're a big boy. Big boys don't cry. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> girls will say, it's okay for a man to cry, which I, I, I guess it is maybe, but at the same time, not over a woman that completely ruined your life or tried like, hurting you, you know what I'm saying? And, and taking half your money and just completely like cheating on you and like destroying you emotionally and, and, and getting in your head and messing you up psychologically. So another tenet of the no contact rule psychology is that it's based in scarcity. The scarcity principle is, is the main driver of the no contact rule because during a breakup, you're in her face all the time. You're doing a lot of unsavory, unseemly things. You're probably not, not just blowing her phone up, hitting her up on Instagram and TikTok. There's a lot of guys out there that if they reach out to they say, I'm gonna kill myself to try to get her attention, to try to, you know, feign sympathy, to, you know, make themselves, to make them have, you know, to have their ex feel sympathy for them to, to try to get back with them. That's a horrible thing. Man, what's funny about that is, all right, bringing up Jillian again, all right? My, my ex back in the day, I was basically her rebound, all right? So when her and her old guy broke up, we first started dating and everything. And, you know, for one, you know, he was, he was like leaving these voicemails, like threatening me and like threatening her and all that stuff. And he just dude went as far as to put like, it looked like ketchup on his wrist, <laughs> talking about like how much he like, 
I can't do this. You brought me to this. You little, you little, you know, it was every cuss word you can think of, man. It was like on a, on a voicemail. And I was that guy on the other end. I was like, dude, what's wrong with this guy? You know, like laughing at him. But that's when you reach rock bottom at that point. Yeah. Yep. But a couple of years, you know, a little while later, I became that guy. Yeah. Oh. Baby, oh. I can't do this. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, and that's what scarcity does to you. So in this particular instance, we already know, you know, the, the, the principle of scarcity. We talked about it a, a, a lot on this channel. Scarcity versus abundance. We tend to take things in abundance for granted because we see it in circulation all the time. And that's what that's what's happening with your ex. Your ex is feeling, oh, you know what? I can get him back at any time. He's on. He's always in my face. I got him wrapped around my little finger right now. I can text him to come over right now. He's at my beck and call. And women, obviously, they love attention. So even quote unquote negative attention when she's you're blowing her phone up and faking suicide. A lot of women relish and revel in that, knowing that even though they may have said, hey, don't ever contact me anymore. A lot of women do love the fact that you're still blowing them up, despite the fact that she's telling you, get out of my life, don't contact me anymore. Because women, they love that attention. But the thing is, when you go no contact, you make your attention scarce. And we know that there is a direct relationship between scarcity and attention because we value the things that are scarce the thing anything that is in in scarcity and we've seen that you know with with the events that have you know that have taken place over the last year or so we've seen how scarcity can drive up attention and drive up demand so when you pull your attention away it becomes scarce and not only that it restricts our freedom of control. And when you pull your attention away, now what that does is you're not giving your ex control of your life anymore. You take the reins back into your into your life and into your form and say, look, I, I, I control the direction of where this is gonna go. I'm not gonna be a little errand boy anymore, getting on my knees and, and begging you to come back to me. And what that does is it, it terrifies her because now she doesn't have that control anymore. The thing about human beings is we're wired to have freedom of choice. And the thing is when you restrict that choice, it provokes an emotional response, especially in your ex. And a good example of this is when you hear kids, uh, when we talk about kids and, and parents, the terrible twos. And the reason why kids, when they're so terrible at the age of two years old is because they have a, a, a myriad of options now. They don't have to be fed anymore. They can feed themselves. They can get up and walk. They can get up and talk. They can get up and play. They can get up and, and grab a toy. They can get up and you know go go to bed. They have opinions about what they want to do. No, I don't want to eat that. I want to eat this. No, I want to watch this. I don't want to watch that. I want to go play. I want to go read a book. So they have a lot of options. But the thing is, being that their options now have, have advanced to a, a great number, they're still restricted by their parents. And this is why they act out because they're not a baby anymore. It's like when you tell a kid, you know, uh, when you tell a, a young kid that, you know, stop acting like a baby. They hate that. Don't act. I'm not a little baby. They hate that. But the thing is, we as parents, you know, they restrict that. And the same thing with teenagers. Teenagers, you know, they're, they're going through a lot of hormonal issues now. And they're on the, the path to adulthood. But the thing is, they also have a lot of advances as far as their opinion. They can stay out late. They can eat. They can cook. They can drive a car. They're, you know, they have an opinion. They're faced with a lot of huge, decision in, in, huge decisions in their life, faced with drugs and sex. So they can make a lot of choices as far as uh, that they, they weren't able to before. Maybe they're, you know, they're able to stay over and get a boyfriend and, and or a girlfriend or they're, they're able to stay out later and so on and so forth. But the thing is, they're still restricted. No, you can't drink this beer. No, you can't have a, a boyfriend. No, you can't stay out late. No, you can't go and, and, you know, get a job. No, I want you to do this. No, you're not going to, you know, drop out of school. No, you know, so parents are still restricting, hugely restricting. That's why they act out. Now you have created a dynamic where your ex is feeling an emotional response. And the reason why that is, is because it's all wired within us evolutionary wise. And because we value the things that are scarce, as I just said. And the thing is, 
What also compounds it is the fact that now since she's feeling something because she doesn't have that control anymore, it's going to make her want you even more now. And compounding that is the fact she's going to make justifications for it. Because when, we re when we're restricted by our control and it makes us want something anymore, we're going to be like, you go on Amazon, it says only two left, only two in stock. Now you're going to be like, man, you know what? It is kind of expensive, but since this is two left, I got to have it. When you pull your attention out, when you pull your, your yourself out of the form of your ex blown her up, now she's going to start making justifications for it. Like, you know what? Man, I do kind of miss him. But the holidays are coming up. Valentine's Day is coming up. And, you know, I do miss him. And, you know, he really was a good guy. But you can only get to that point if you go no contact, if you pull your attention out of the form to allow her to miss you, to allow her to start feeling that emotional spike for you, to, to allow yourself to be scarce. But you can't do that if you're in her face because your attention is in abundance right now. And she's looking at that and taking it for granted. But it's time to make yourself scarce and allow that emotional spike to happen. And that, that can only happen through space and going no contact. Damn. <laughs> I told you it was going to be a lot. <laughs> like, I'm ready to raise my hand. And I, was, I was like, I, was, I say something. Like, so what No Contact does, it pretty much wipes the slate clean. And I say this all the time to everybody. Time is the biggest band-aid. Right. It's like any type of like hurt, pain, or boo-boo you have will go away. It'll, it'll completely dissolve. Maybe the scar will be there. Maybe. But over time, it's like it, it, it heals. It's like it, it, it'll be covered up by time. And again, as long as you didn't do anything like beyond like stupidly, ignorantly crazy, I mean, it's like you you have you have good odds. It's just like, it's, yeah. it's just a matter of how you play the game, like how you throw your cards down. You know, observe the situation, like follow the steps. You have to trust the process, you guys. And that's where a lot of guys mess up. You have to trust the process. Anybody will tell you. Anybody that's actually successfully done no contact will tell you, man, it's really not as hard as you. Think. You just start, you just over, you're overthinking it. And that's where guys mess up at. You have to trust the process. Anytime you guys are thinking about calling your ex-girlfriend up, I hope this rings in your head. Me saying, you have to trust the process. Walk around your house and even say it out loud. I have to trust the process because it works. There's been studies that actually like prove like this is the best way to get your ex back is by stepping away and giving them time to heal, give them time to recover. Let that little scar on their head be covered up with a band. You can't cover a scar in their head with a band, <laughs> technically. But you get what I'm saying. You gotta like, you gotta give them time. Women are emotional as can be, man. So you yeah. gotta let them have that time to actually like recover from being like all like haywire crazy. Like yeah. let them like calm down and relax for whatever it was that caused a break up, whatever, whatever you did, whatever you didn't do. Focus on yourself. Get yourself together. Go to the gym. Read. Start a business. Do something. A woman is not gonna want to come back to a guy that's exactly the same person they exactly. were. And the breakup. Say that again, man. A woman is not going to want to come back to a guy that was the same person they were at the end of the breakup. You guys started dating for a reason. You want to focus on what it was that she was attracted to when you first started talking. Be that guy times two is what you want to do. And that's why you should reach out for the private coaching. A lot of people get confused. They don't even know what to do. It's like they get to the point where you get in your emotions and you start doing things that you, that you shouldn't be doing, but you think it's the right thing to do. That's why you need private coaching. Personally, me, I was raised by, by, you know, she's not, she wasn't a life coach, but she was a motivational speaker. She's a well-known motivational speaker for, for her career. I went from being a, a complete, like, mess up, you know, I, a, a little needy, like, I was like the biggest pansy. I guarantee you I'm probably a bigger pansy than I'm, the majority of our subscribers at that time. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be nearly as successful as I am today. I still would have been a little crybaby that's begging women to come back to me or buying girls flowers and, you know what I'm saying, doing all the little, like, little pansy stuff that, that guys be doing the coaching is where it's at like a lot of people like I, I mean I was like I was even like I was like so embarrassed to even like even ask her to even like help me out yeah but at the same time it's like I feel like that was like the best thing I did even like with therapists I know so many people that had like crazy dark times in their life where you emotional you know what I'm saying where they're like legit like suicidal and like hated life and just were like completely like into drugs and like ruining their lives and like the moment they reached out to the to the therapist i mean it wasn't like a uh, it wasn't like a quick fix i mean it took like roughly like you know two months for them to actually say okay I, I can see the picture more clear now but like if you're in that dark hole and you're in that dark situation reach out to a therapist if you're confused about the no contact and you're like going crazy over this girl and you know you're about to mess up you need to reach out for a coaching to put you in your place and to, and to make sure you got a strategy put together to actually get you what it is that you're looking for so with that being said hit us up at blackbookbasics.com. 
forward slash private coaching, and then we'll talk to y'all next time. Peace.